In this lesson, we will be building a very simple counter component and our main focus will be styling the HTML elements to look like this. And as always, the lesson will be heavily edited to make sure that you get the best bang for your time. So let's go. We start off with an empty Tailwind Next.js project and you are free to bring in your own but if you are curious about this particular template, I have a lesson dedicated to it that I will leave in the video description. Now right now as the homepage is rendering just a simple null, if you visit the website, it is completely empty. Now in order to contain all of the counter logic, we will create a component called counter within the components folder. We bring in this counter component that we have yet to create and then jump into the file explorer and create a file called counter.tsx. We will use the simple react hook called useState for maintaining the state of the current count and if you are curious about this particular hook, I have a lesson dedicated to that as well that I will leave in the video description. Now our counter component is going to be a very simple react function component. Fundamentally, it contains some portion of logic where we use the useState hook to create a count and then we have two utility functions increment and decrement and they do exactly what you would expect that is incrementing and decrementing the count value. Finally, within the render of our component, we have a simple container div that contains a button to decrement, our currently displayed count, as well as a button to increment. And that's it for the logic portion of this particular lesson. We already have a fully functional counter. We can decrement the count, we can increment the count, and it works exactly as you would expect. Now we will style this component using a few CSS classes. These classes will exist in a CSS module called counter.module.css and it will contain the class names for the container as well as for the buttons as well as for the count. So of course the next step is to create this file called counter.module.css. Now the first class that we will create will be for our container div. Now we are using Tailwind utilities over here to be as productive as possible but if you are new to Tailwind, I have a lesson dedicated to the Tailwind fundamentals that I will link in the video description. But at its core, these are just utility class names that we can combine and they point to just simple CSS properties. For example, flex points to display flex, flex row points to flex direction row, and items end points to align items flex end. So with these CSS property value pairs, we are creating a flexbox layout and we are setting the flex direction to a row so that the items appear in a single row. And with items end, we are aligning them at the bottom in the vertical dimension. Next, we are going to style our buttons and they are going to have a height of 10 and a width of 10 and in order to turn them into a complete circle, we are using the utility rounded full. Now we want a bigger size for our count, so we are using a height of 20 and a width of 20 and we are bumping up the font size as well by using text 3xl and again, we want it a circle, so rounded full. And finally, to center the text within this particular count div, we are using a flex layout and we are centering the items both in the cross as well as the main axis to basically center it in both dimensions. So now if we jump to the UI, you can see that we sort of have the items in a nice layout at the right size and sort of the right place that we want them to be. Let's move this side by side with our code so we can start doing some rapid design iterations. Now the next thing that I would probably want to do at this point is to add the nice colors. We are going with a combination of barely grey texts with slate backgrounds and when we save this, you can see that our UI looks immediately better. Now the next thing that I would want to do is to move the buttons for the plus and the minus to be closer to the counter to indicate that it's a part of that UI. A neat trick that we can use in order to achieve that is to add a negative left and right margin to the center count in order to bring the buttons in. With this neat utility, we are saying that give this count element a negative margin of 3 units in the x axis that is both the left and the right. Now the buttons have definitely moved in but you might see the issue that the negative button is actually behind the count display. We can fix that quite easily and ensure that the buttons are always on top of the counter by giving them a z index. And we are just going to give them a z index of 10 with the z10 utility. Now the buttons definitely feel like they are a part of the counter component. Now I would like some separation between the buttons and the counter visually and we can do that with a simple two unit border on the button components. I still feel like when we interact with the buttons, they do feel a bit bland. One simple fix is to add some nice hover effects. So when the user hovers over the button, the colors change and the text becomes a bit bigger. Now we can see that in action when we hover over the two plus and the minus buttons. However, the transition is not there, it's a bit janky. So let's add nice animation for the transition 
between hover and the non-hover states. Instead of listing out all the properties that we plan to animate, we'll simply add transition all and then for our duration, we'll use 200 milliseconds using duration 200. And now when we hover over the two buttons, we get a nice smooth experience between the hover and the non-hover states. And that's all for this lesson. If you enjoyed building this counter component, then smash that like and subscribe. If you are interested more in Tailwind, then here's a lesson where we build a grid layout using Tailwind CSS. And here's a video that YouTube thinks that you should watch next. As always, thanks for joining me and I will see you in the next one.